myself will achieve. Look at yourself and say, I was getting. I, get I, I will get there. I will get there. I will get there. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are welcome again. Today is an awesome day. Anytime we come in the presence of God, we don't live the same. Hallelujah. We don't live the same. Physically, spiritually, you don't live the same. Whenever you come in the presence of God, God has a way of turning you up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, when we have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. From all unrighteousness, He turns us up. That's why when you come in the presence of God like this, hear this. It's not only, you are not coming because you are special. You are not coming because you are so holy. You are not here. What God will do for you today in this place, your miracle, everything you will receive is not based because of your righteousness. No. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, so, the mercy of God, nobody can define it. Amen. Hallelujah. It's more than what we can imagine. Because God reserve in himself that whenever we come, in order for us to receive all he has for us, he still purifies us. Every day, every time. So as we are here, there is purification that is going on. And God does that just to make sure that everything he has for you, you receive it. Amen. Are you there what I'm saying? That's why whenever we gather together, the blood of Jesus Christ will just begin to walk. Perfection, anybody succeed. Perfection, the one will stand behind you and says, this one, are you going to heal him? Are you going to believe him? Are you going to uh, bless him? Are you, are you giving a word of revelation or a word of, a, a word of wisdom? Lord, don't do that because Last night, I, went, I saw what he did. Hallelujah. I saw what he did. I followed him to that corner. But God said, no, the blood of Jesus is also available here in the name of Jesus. So no one can be hindered or denied any blessing that is due him when it comes to the prison. Amen. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. So when you come to the presence of God, be bold. Hallelujah. Amen. Be bold. You will receive everything that God has for you. Don't let the devil remind you about what you did last night. Last night, today is a new day. Today is a new day. You are in the presence of God. In the name of Jesus. And you will receive and must receive that which God has for you. Mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. Oh, I love this Jesus. If you love Jesus, Jesus like me, why not you put your hands together for him? I love him. I love him. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good. Father, bless us today. Speak to us today. Touch our lives today. He lost today. In the name of Jesus. Please let me say this. Stand up, stand up. Word of revelation. If you are feeling any kind of sickness in your body, please come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Receive your healing now. Come forward. Be healed. Be healed. He sent forth his word. And his word healing. I am standing not by my own power, but I have been given power. I have been given I am standing and the Bible said, Go in my name, you shall hear the sick in the name of Jesus. Father, to this hour, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as I bless my hands up there, I command to hear the venture. Be healed in the name of Jesus. 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 Rest in the 
you will not be better than who you are before. Amen. But I want you to know that in the midst of that trials and tribulations, God is not far. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now it comes in diverse manners. Temptation and tribulation comes in diverse manners. It can show up as an unemployment. It can show up as a marital problem. It can show up as financial difficulties. It can show up as health issues or one challenges or the other. Hallelujah. And when it comes, sometimes they come in multiples. Yeah. Are you telling what I'm saying? Yes. I've been there. It comes in multiples. Hallelujah. It comes in multiples. But I'm here to tell you that you will be you, you are an overcomer. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are an overcomer. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are an overcomer. And the Bible. Let us know that as long as we are here, that we should expect, we should expect that. Hallelujah. Amen. We should expect that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just look at John chapter 16, verse 32. Hallelujah. Amen. As long as we are here. We should expect that. John verse 16, John chapter 16, verse 33. Is it projected yet? Yes. Okay, look, let's see something today. <laughs> One pastor that I listen on the TV sometimes say, What did the book say? <laughs> let's see what the book said. The Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 11, it says, These things I have spoken unto you. Hallelujah. We have a God that He let us know ahead of time certain things that we need to, that we will, we will confront in life so that we will prepare our, ourselves. He said, These things I have spoken to you that in me, you might have peace. Hallelujah. Oh my God. He said, in the world, you shall have trouble. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. In this world, you will have what? Trouble. trouble. You will have what? Trouble. Amen. Now, the world will always give trouble. Heaven will give an answer. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The world will give trouble. The heaven will provide an answer. That's why David in Psalm 121, he said, I look up to the hill. Hallelujah. We are coming what? My help. My help will come from where? From the Lord. The world will supply trouble. But the heaven we provide an answer. Hallelujah. So if you are looking for an answer in life, it's not in this world. It's always in the heavens. Amen? So the Bible let us know here that in this world, we will experience tribulations. It comes in diverse manners. It comes in diverse manners. It comes in different ways. And it doesn't stop just once. Hallelujah. It's part of life. Hallelujah. It's part of life. Hallelujah. Write this in that. This inspiration just came. Up. Anyone that has not experienced trouble before can never experience victory. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you, if you have never experienced trouble before, there is no way you can experience victory. As a result of 
a troubled experience that you have passed through. But I thank God because that verse or that didn't stop at tribulation. He said, But to be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the question is, How did he overcome the world? Amen. What thing that can we learn from his experience? What are the things that has made our Father belong to us that we can then use to overcome the world? Hallelujah. Write this thing down. Again. What kills people in life is not the trouble they are confronted is sometimes and a lot of times is because they don't know how to get out of that trouble. Not knowing how to get out of the trouble is more dangerous than the trouble that you encounter. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the what kills people is not a trouble. It's not knowing how to get out of that trouble. Not having an answer to that trouble. That's what kills trouble. No, that's what kills people. And not the trouble they confront. Amen. Like many of us today, some people are facing financial challenges. Hallelujah. Financial challenges. Now, the reason is not that because there is shortage of money. That's not shortage of money. The problem is that we have not, you have not developed a way of attracting money or creating money. So the trouble you are having is not because you are having financial trouble. The problem you are having is because you have not discovered a way of making money. True or false? True. So instead of asking and groaning and saying, Lord, this trouble, confirming your faith, changing your attitude, what you should be praying is, Lord, can you give me an idea? Grant me wisdom. Show me the way that I can deal with this trouble. Because as soon as I master it, trouble will disappear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Jesus said, Be of good cheer. Because I have come, overcome the world. Hallelujah. Be of good cheer. Because I have overcome the world. So the troubles in life, trouble, temptation, trials and tribulations, they are part of the Christian journey, part of a Christian experience. Part of a Christian experience. It comes in different manners, it comes at different levels. As we journey this journey of faith, we will encounter trouble. But I thank God because. That is a way out. Look at your neighbor and say, that is a way out. That is a way out. That is a way out. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. First Corinthians. Let's dig deeper. First Corinthians chapter 10, chapter 10, verse 10. The Bible says something there very profound. And look at it here. Say, there had no trouble, trials, temptation, whatever, however, whatever language you use, trouble is trouble. Hallelujah. Taking you, but such is what common to man. Are you getting something there? Yes, sir. That is, look at yourself and say, there is no new trouble. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is no new trouble. There is no trouble that is new. Under the sun. Whatever thing you are passing through, some people have passed through that. And some people are still passing through that. Now that should give you comfort. Because what that scripture is letting us know, that because it is common, there is an answer for it. It is when something that is new that the people, people begin to say, what is the solution for this? Right. Hallelujah. Yes. What is the solution for this? What is the solution for this? What is the solution for this? But when something that is common 
solution there is always a solution for it whatever thing that you are doing whatever thing you are going through the bible says that it is common to men hallelujah so there are some people when some people come to you and they narrate their trouble they narrate what they are going through as if they are the only one hallelujah and the only one that is going through that me too I have trouble hallelujah so you are not alone you are not alone you are not alone but the bible said that but God is what faithful are you not glad that God is faithful who will not suffer you to do what to be tempted above that which you can be able but will with the temptation also make a way to do what a lot of people see in life their trouble and their problem more than they see the way of escape in their trouble hallelujah many people see more of their trouble more than they see the solution for their trouble hallelujah Amen. every trouble in life has a expiration date are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm getting you something. Because if you don't understand these things, there is no way you will have the motivation to move forward in life. It will cripple you. You will think you are alone. You will cause no. You come to the point where when you are walking on the street, you are crying. Hallelujah. And the world don't know how to show mercy. It's only God that knows how to show mercy. Hallelujah. So understand that in the midst of the trouble, there is always what a solution and answer. God has never abandoned his people, and he will not start with you. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you read the book of Exodus, when the children of Israel was in the in Egypt, the Bible said that in the midst of their trouble. When they were suffering, as they were suffering, in the midst of that, Moses was born. Hallelujah. An answer was given. Moses was born. As the trouble was growing, Moses was growing. <laughs> Hallelujah. As the trouble was growing, as the pain was growing, Moses was being grown. God will never abandon his people. And I will, tell, I will show you why. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, God is so committed to you more than you are committed to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want you to understand that. In fact, I was driving yesterday as I was going home. The Lord said, Son, I am more committed to you more than you are committed to me. God is more committed to you more than you will call you are committed to God. God loves you more than you love God. God does not justify you based on the ratio of your love to him. Hallelujah. He's more committed to you than you will ever be committed to him. Even if you don't come to church today, God still loves you. Hallelujah. And many of you, many of us are backslided in time past, but still, his hands of grace were still upon our lives. So I want you to understand that, that God will never abandon his people. Amen. And he will not start with you. Regardless of what you are going through, I am here to tell you that that tribulation, that trial, I don't care how big it looks, it has an expiration date. A day is coming when that trouble will disappear. And when it will disappear, God will not give you nothing. Right now, God is doing something in your life. Yeah. And you hear what I'm saying? So don't give up. You need determination. You need perseverance. Amen. You need patience. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we find out there that God will always give a way, all has a way, a way of escape, a way of dealing with the trouble. So the reason I'm saying this is that because if you don't have certain things, determination will be impossible. You will give in, you will give up. Even as you are miracle trusting. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your right hand and say, I will never give up on God. Amen. I will never give up on God. Amen. I will follow him. Amen. I will trust him. Amen. I will believe in him. Amen. All the way. Amen. Job will say it this way. Say, even if you slay me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even if you slay me, I will still follow you. Hallelujah. Amen. So that scripture says that God has a way. Has a way. What kills people sometimes is not the trouble or the trials that they are confronted with. But not knowing how to get out of that trouble is even more dangerous than the trouble. Or sometimes he rejecting the way. Because a lot of people are so stubborn. When God said, do this, they say, over my dead body, I can't do that. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? When God said, this is it, this is the way. And sometimes the ways of God is not the same way as the ways of man. Some things are so simple instruction. Some things that sound so foolish. But what God is looking for is your obedience. Hallelujah. In every trouble, there is an answer. Whether it's spiritual or physical, there is an answer somewhere. There is an answer somewhere. So there is not there is an answer somewhere. Hallelujah. Let's look at First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. The Bible said in the first Peter chapter 5 verse 10, he said, But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, may make you perfect and what establish you and what and do what again? Hallelujah. 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 That's good news that come with trouble. I'm sorry. Are you here or As far as God is concerned. Amen. Trouble is not bad for a child of God. Trouble is not bad. I want you to begin to look at things differently from today on. One is that troubles don't last forever. It doesn't last forever. That trouble will never last forever. Amen. If you're unemployed today, I'm here to tell you in a days to come, you will come and testify. If I you will run out of job. Amen. I used to tell my friends, I said, look, Especially my Nigerian friend that comes here, they want to do all kind of jobs, if I anything, anything. I said, don't say anything, anything. <laughs> Man, you will run and you will do this and do that, and you will hate the death. <laughs> Are you here? I want to settle down. Ask God to lead you. Amen. Yes. It looks like that is all. It's consuming you. Because a day will come when you will testify that, Pastor, I have gotten that job that has been harassing me. Amen. So trouble doesn't last forever. Now, but I want you also to notice here that when you are facing trouble, that God is in the midst of that trouble with you. Amen. Amen. God is in the midst of the trouble with you. Sometimes we forget that. Hallelujah. I want somebody to open with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13, verse 6, verse 6 and Hebrews chapter 13, verse Verse 5. I will come back to Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. We need to learn some things. Because 
because the word of God is our guide in everything that we are doing in life. It's the word of God that uh, gives us the answer to what God has for us. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 6, it says, if thy, throat, if, the, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy daughter, this is, this is not the, the scripture I'm looking for. I must have quoted the wrong scripture. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Deuteronomy at 1, please. Deuteronomy at 1, verse 6. Now, listen to what Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 said. Be strong and of what? Of good courage. Hallelujah. Be one, be strong and of good courage. Fear not. Nor be afraid of what? Of the trouble of them. For the Lord thy God, he is he that doeth good with thee. He will not fail thee, nor what? That is the word I'm looking for. Hallelujah. Amen. Why will God not fail you or forsake you? God relates with us not as we relate with the human beings. Hallelujah. Amen. We relate with the human beings based on condition. If you like me, I like him. If he gives me, I give him. If he greets me, I greet him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is just our relationship. Amen. Sometimes it's not two ways, it's just one way traffic. But God relates with us on a covenant basis. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God deals with you on a covenant basis. That is why the Bible says he will never forsake you. God is so committed to you more than you are committed to God. When God saves you and delivers you from the power of darkness, according to Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, he enters into covenant with you. Everlasting covenant. The blood of Jesus Christ sealed that covenant. That is why he is so authentic. Everything that God promised you and I, God established it on the old on the old of covenant, on the altar of covenant. And on my covenant will I not break, says the Lord. Hallelujah. So that is why it is too late for God to forsake you. I'm echoing. Is sometimes with the microphone. I hear myself. So that is it's too late for God to do what? To forsake him. You are a covenant child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You are a covenant daughter of God. I am a covenant son of God. There is a covenant that speaking on my behalf. What I got from God is not dependent on what I put in. It's dependent on the covenant that God has established. Hallelujah. My prosperity, my destiny, and everything I enjoy from God is based as a result of the covenant that is speaking on my behalf. So God deals with us based on the covenant. The covenant of God bound to him. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says it is too late for God to lie. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that. I can heal myself. God is my healer. I have a relationship and a covenant with God that whenever my heart sickness, he takes responsibility of that. And not only he will heal me, he also pay the bills. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. I am the Lord that he may be I am the Lord. I am the Lord. He is the Lord. 
every day because he has seen that you have you are a child of destiny. You are a child of destiny. You are going somewhere. God has created you and fashioned you and built you for a purpose. That is a blessing taking you. That is a glory that will come out of you. That is God inside you. That is something that God wants to accomplish through you. And you said what I'm saying. And it's harassing you based on that. Hallelujah. But the Bible says something here. That but the God of grace, of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, the anointed one. After that, you have suffered a while. Make you perfect. Establish, strengthen you, and work to you. There is settlement that comes after every tribulation that you pass through. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is more interested in the process in your life more than where you are in. Many of us want to get here quick and fast. God has never built any man overnight. He takes process. For whatever thing that God is committed into your hand to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you here are on the journey of destiny? Hallelujah. Now the reason we sometimes shake and knock our head, suffer so much, is because sometimes many of us are pursuing a selfish interest ambition. And we want to get here. Hallelujah. But if God has given you a destiny and you are pursuing the destiny of God, God has a way of processing you and taking you through and maturing you and building character out of you. Hallelujah. God has a way. The Bible says that when you go through this, after you finish going through it, there is a lesson you have to learn. God will establish you. After God establishes you, you will be grounded on how to deal with issues, on how to deal with people, on how to make some sound decisions. Hallelujah. Because what you're carrying is not only your own destiny, you are carrying the destiny of others. Yes, true. Along with you. That's right. Hallelujah. As a pastor, I have said so many things I come across. I look at things, I chew it, even before I make decisions. Hallelujah. Because there are some things you will alter, you will just wreck. There are some lifestyle that is not permitted in the journey of life and in the journey of this. So, through all these things, God yes. is maturing you. God is forming you. God is building you. And at the end of that, God will settle you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, there is a settlement that comes when we are going through trials. I want you to understand that. A lesson that we need to learn. God will never abandon you, regardless what you are going through. That is a way of escape. Hallelujah. That is a way of escape. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says something in the book of First Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13. Let's just go back in there. I want to focus on the last one. Leave the trouble alone. Leave the temptation alone. We have learned today that it's a part of our Christian work. It comes in diverse manners. Hallelujah. Some of the things you are facing today, others is different. Others are not. Some people are facing financial challenges. Some are medical challenges. Some are asking God, when will my mate come? All that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff that is here. They are all temptations. They are all trials. They are all tribulations. I want you to know that in the midst of that, God is with you. He will never forsake you or leave you alone. But above all, the Bible says something here that God has made a way of escape that you may be 
be able to bear it. Hallelujah. And one of those ways that God has made a way of escape is what I titled the virtue of determination or perseverance. Because it's only those that have this virtue that can overcome trials and tribulations. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The power of perseverance. The power of perseverance. It's only those that have that, that God, that will escape the trials and tribulations. And the power of perseverance talks about our faith in God. Hallelujah. Our faith in God. Our faith in God. Because faith is not faith. Faith is not faith until that faith is tested. Are you here? Yes, Show me your test. I will know your faith. Hallelujah. Faith is no faith until faith is what tested. Hallelujah. It's not faith until it tested and it transfers. Then you know it's faith. Faith that is not tested can never be trusted or depend upon. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Faith that is not tested can never be, be trusted or depend upon. Amen. Amen. So, when trouble comes, that is when God expects us to use, to determine, to win that trouble with a determined faith. Faith that doesn't quit. Faith that doesn't cave in. Faith that says, I know that my redeemer living, I will never give up until I triumph. Hallelujah. During times of prosperity, during times of prosperity, it is easy to recognize God in all our lives. During the time of prosperity, it's easy to recognize God in all our lives. When something is going well, it's easy to say, hey, Lord, I thank you. Oh, God, I have, God did this. But can you also, in the midst of your trials and tribulations, testify that God is good? Hallelujah. Can you look beyond that? And say that God is working out something. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you maintain the same attitude, the same character, the same virtue, when you are passing through something. Hallelujah. That is what God is looking for. Amen. We must recognize God not only in the times of prosperity, but also when we are facing challenges. Hallelujah. Amen. It is when times are difficult that faith becomes the most powerful virtue in our life. Hallelujah. Amen. It's when time is difficult that faith becomes the most powerful virtue in our life. Hallelujah. Now, what is then faith? The Bible describes faith in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 as a substance of things hope for the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Now, but here it is. Christian faith is predicated upon crossing the Lord. Crossing God. Now, hear me very well, people of God. You are not here just to 
you know, listen to me. You are here to get some insight on how to deal with this because this is part of life. I've seen trouble separate people, make them not come to church again, put them far back away from God. Hallelujah. Run away from church, run away from people, get isolated, and anything that isolates you from God has the capacity to destroy you. And you hear what I'm saying? All over the world, we see the faith, people use this virtue to come out of trouble. Amen. So, now, I was meditating upon this last night. And the Lord ministered something to me that I have never thought of before. When you say you have faith, what does it really mean? When I say I have faith, I have faith, I have faith, what does it mean? It just fall down that you are trusting God. Right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You are trusting in God. You are trusting in God. And what is really that trust in God? Hallelujah. What is really trust in that God? Now, trust in God, first of all, means to know deep inside you that first of all, that he is God. I really want to penetrate inside your heart today. Because sometimes we say these things, it doesn't register in our heart. It doesn't register in our heart. Trusting God simply means when you say you have faith, what you are saying, because faith is a combination of all these things, that I, that there is God. Because there are people who don't believe there is God. Is that acknowledgement of God, first of all. First of all. First of all. That in my journey, there is this God. Hallelujah. Amen. The makers of heavens and earth. Right inside, in deep inside me, that there is this God. Now, yesterday when I was praying, God said, Holy Spirit, said, Holy Spirit says something to me. Very profound. He says something. Let me tell you something. Nobody will know me for you. Let me repeat. Nobody will know God for you. Nobody will know God on their behalf. Are you hearing what I'm In as much as I to encourage you, in as much as I try to give you some word, in as much as I try to preach, in as much as I try to feed you with the word of God, I cannot develop the relationship you're supposed to develop yourself with God. It's your personal responsibility. You have to know this God yourself. I don't care how that man is anointed. I don't care how that church is big as that church is. No church will know God for you. No man of God will know God for you. You have to know this God yourself. You have to come to a point where you know that inside the people, inside me, I know this God. I know his existence. I know what he can do. I believe in him and I trust in him. I don't care what is happening that is happening. I know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And because when that is not registered in your heart, it's easy for people to deceive you. It's easy for problem to isolate you. It's easy for temptation things to separate you from him. If it's not registered in your heart, that is the beginning of a determined faith. That you know this God. And based on that, whenever something happens, the first thing that will register in your heart is the peace of God. Because you know he lives. Are you hearing him? You know he's not far. The second thing that you really need to know, in order to determine and prevail, 
is to know. Is to know that he exists. Hallelujah. Is to know that this God is not a friendly, there is no something there. You have to come into the knowledge that this God exists. That we are not serving a God who does not exist. I will show you one scripture before I finish in Hebrew. You have to understand in your closet, in your room, in your bedroom, in anywhere, you have to have this knowledge that this God really exists. As I am talking to you, as I existed, as I can see you, that this God in reality exists. Hallelujah. Without all this, it is impossible to develop a determined faith. It's going to be a shadow faith. That this beyond any comprehension that this God exists. The Bible says when he ascended unto heaven, he seated at the right hand of God. You need to know that this God is a living God. He exists. Hallelujah. He exists. He exists. The third thing that you need to know is that to believe his word by faith. To believe the word of God. To believe this word. Not the word of man. But to believe this word. That whatever he promised that will happen, will happen. The Bible said, Jesus said, making the boast of his word. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But none of this thing that is written here will pass away unfulfilled. You have to, people, this is serious. Otherwise, you are playing religiosity. You are just playing, but you know, you are just, you know, you know, just this, this, this. this. And that is why when you have this kind of relationship God, every day, you are joy you feel. Situation will never control you. You won't see your first self framing and quarreling on top of the situation and circumstances. You are at peace and you are calm. Because you believe the word of God. And it will surely come to pass. I don't care how long it takes. In fact, the longer it takes, the better. <laughs> Hallelujah. The longer it takes, the better. Because when it comes, it comes to all. Hallelujah. When it comes, it comes to all. The longer I persevere, the more glorious the outcome will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you must know that. And nobody can believe the word of God for you. Nobody can believe the word of God for you. The entire revelation I have. It's based on my relationship and what has been said to me. Nobody can believe this word for you. You have to believe it yourself. Hallelujah. You have to believe it yourself. The fourth thing that you have to understand that these are the seed of determination. To believe also the power of this word. Not, it's one thing to believe the word of God. It's another thing to believe the power that is in the word of God. I read something in the book of Psalm. We don't have time. I think Psalm 33. The Bible said by the word of your mouth, the heavens and the earth were what? The Lord said something to me. He said whenever I speak my word, he creates intangible things. You have to really know that the, there is power in the word of God. The word of God is not the word of man that amounts to nothing. That when God says something, something comes out of it. You have to come to that understanding. You have to grab that. Those must be the foundations of your determination. Otherwise, it becomes an empty faith. 
Hallelujah. You have to understand that. The last thing that I want you to recognize, the Holy Ghost ministered to me, this day to me, why I was sleeping last night, I was still wrestling with the message, and meditating upon it. The Holy Ghost gave me an insight. And he said something to me. He said, son, always recognize the presence of my Holy Spirit within you. I know you are not. Sometimes the Christians don't, they do things, they don't recognize that there is a somebody called Holy Ghost. We push him at the corner. We consult friends. We relate with friends more than we relate with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he's your friend, he's your best friend. He's your helper. Always recognize the presence of the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Always recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the gift that God has given the New Testament Christians. That is what makes our journey and our relationship with God more effectual and effective. The presence of the Holy Spirit. You can never survive this generation, this perversion, without every time recognizing the presence of the Holy Ghost, without having a unique relationship with the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Otherwise, your Christian faith will be frustrated. Always recognize the presence of the Holy Ghost in you, in your life. Jesus said he will be with you forever. He will have an assignment in your life. Hallelujah. Whenever you are going through something, understand that the Holy Spirit is there. Hallelujah. Even if it's not there, make sure that you invite the Holy Ghost in your midst. Hallelujah. Make sure that you carry the Holy Spirit with you. Hallelujah. Make sure that the Holy Spirit is with you. I want to leave you with this last point. And it's found in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Let's read that scripture. Very profound. You are coming here to hear the word of God. People of God without this, every day of your life in this room. If you don't inculcate these virtues in your life. Because I'm here to tell you that the world is full of them. As you're going to one, another one is coming. But there is an answer that God has given unto us. Amen. Now, the last thing that I want you to understand I must build up your faith. And then I will close. It's found in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Now, listen to this carefully. Listen to this carefully. Nobody should be talking. Forget, don't leave, don't leave the offering envelope. We'll collect the offering letter. There's something bit more important than, than that for now. I appreciate what you're doing. The ushers are doing your job. But let's just get this right. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, chapter 4, verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot what? Sympathize. Some scripture, some, some, some translations say who cannot be touched. I like this one. Who cannot be touched with the feelings of our what? Infirmities. Oh my God. But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet we that say. But forget about the port. Just focus on the on the on the on the first and first and second line. He said we have not an high priest which cannot be taught by our family. One other thing you need to know: whenever you are going through something, your pain touches a high priest. Your cry touches him. Your groaning. Touches him. 
whatever you are going through is touching Jesus Christ. He said, for we have not, or we have a high priest that every time we are groaning, my God, he is touched by our pain. He is touched by our sicknesses. He is touched by our infirmities. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need to understand this and walk in this revelation. That is why Christ can heal you quicker than you have ever imagined. Because as that thing, the headache is knocking you, it's touching him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As that unemployment is setting on your face, it's touching him. As that crisis is coming, it's touching him. So he's feeling it. Yes. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, the son of the righteous shall arise with the healing in his wings. The son of the righteous shall arise with salvation in his way. The son of the righteous shall arise with the solution in his wings. I am here to tell you that whatever thing you are facing, Jesus Christ is facing that. He sees all. He knows all. He is taught by your pain. He knows what you are going through. He is going through the same thing that you are going through. And he will never forsake you. Amen. Never leave you alone. You will never be stranded in that problem. You will never be stranded in that problem. You will never be stranded in that problem. You will never be left alone in that problem. He will not kill you. He didn't kill him. He will not kill you. Stand on your feet. That's the message of the truth. Understand this. Is. Understand this. Is. He got the spirit of God. Now, when you have this understanding, then you can come to go to the world. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, as a pastor, I have cried. I said, Lord, how will this be? What do I do here? He said, I have promised you what I promised you years ago. I have not changed my mind. I still stand by my word. All you need to do is to stand strong. It will surely come to pass. That one word I have released over you. Has God to say something to anybody here? I say it will surely come to pass. I love that scripture. Say I am touched by what you're going to do. What touches you touches him. That is the beauty of the Lord we serve. There is no one like him. Hallelujah. What touches you, what you're going through sometimes, even as a husband and a wife, what your wife is going through sometimes, she goes out the Lord. But the Bible said that whenever I'm going through something, Jesus Christ, my Lord, goes through that thing with me. My pain, it becomes his pain. My trouble becomes his trouble. I want you to realize that today. And whatever thing, whatever God has called you to, he's there with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up your hand and say, my father. My Lord. My God. My father. I love you. I give you praise. I exalt your name. I worship you. I magnify your name. In my troubles, you are there with me. In my pain. In my infirmity. Lord, you are there with me. In touch you see what I go through in life. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. And I give you praise. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus. Oh, we do want to know something. You know that you love us. And our infirmities touches him. Lord, I give you praise. In Jesus' name. All eyes closed. All heads bowed.